Hello, I'm Dominic Diamond. Like me, and more importantly my agent and my bank manager, you probably wake up most mornings thinking, whatever happened to the early 90s? For those of you who are too young or mentally infirm to remember 15 years ago, trust me, the early 90s were like a brilliant version of today. Like today, the early 90s had a war in Iraq. But that one was great! We kicked their arse! But settled for a draw after 90 minutes and only suffered minor troop chafing. And like today, the early 90s had music. But back then we had little pills with doves on them to make it all sound great, even when it wasn't. And if all that got too much for you, you could retreat into dim-lit dens of neon wonder called arcades, where lots of people met to play video games. It's a bit like what the internet does today, but you had to get on a bus to get to this version of the internet, and it smelled of sweat, vinegar, and that slightly musky biscuit odour carried by unwashed teenage jeans. This film will bring you all of this. Adoken! Pardon me, do you have any grey poupon? Wayne's World came out in 1991, another example of events of the early 90s foreshadowing those of today. It was a film about two wasters who sat in a room talking barely thought out guff that still somehow seemed funny. In fact, if Wayne's World had a scene in which they phoned up an old age pensioner and left messages about shagging his daughter, it would have been just like Jonathan Ross and Russell Brand. Not. See, I don't think anyone who was living life in the 90s did not start reciting anything from Wayne's World. Not. Not. Duh. Was that Bill and Ted? Excuse me? Baking powder? You would actually reply in the negative solely so you could add not on the end of the sentence. That doesn't really happen now, does it? Bacon sandwich, not for me. Not. I can't remember the catchphrases apart from schwing. Schwing. We are not worthy. I've still used that when I meet celebrities now. Why people didn't just slaughter us, I have no idea. Jeremy, one of my mates, would go around going, fuck's here, fuck's here, like that. And I didn't know what this meant, but would every now and then go, fuck's here, yeah, ha ha ha. Who didn't start rocking out to Wayne's World and every time Bohemian Rhapsody would come on in a car, if your dad was driving, that had to happen. I would join in with a head banging, not having a clue why I was doing it. But um, I then watched it 10 years later and it all made sense. Wayne's World rocked it. Basic Instinct was the most controversial film release of the time, with sexual content not previously seen in a mainstream movie. It was also one of those times where you left the cinema not necessarily remembering all the film, but never forgetting a brief snatch. I don't remember any of the film apart from that moment, do you? Oh, what, the bit where Michael... Um, uh, gets out the car? Gets out yes, the car. that's the one. I've not actually seen the whole film. I've just seen that bit. She's definitely got no knickers you on. Can, you can see that the essence of it. From what I can remember, you can't actually see anything. Not that I'm being perverted or anything. <laughs> you, you can't actually see anything. I'm sure many, many men across the world paused and rewound and destroyed their videotapes looking for the crucial moment. We had a bit of a crap video and I, I do frame advance and it was kind of all blurry and the picture was going all like this. Yeah, and they wouldn't be able to do a slow motion thing. Yes. I was constantly rewinding that shit. I mean, Sharon Stone was fully nude. Unfortunately, so was Michael Douglas. Yay, us girls get such a treat with that one. Dr. Nathan Burger! Another parallel betwixt the early 90s and the late noughties is Robin Hood. Today, we have the Saturday evening BBC One drama. In 1991, we had Kevin Costner's Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Both popular, both crap. But only one had an American Robin Hood and a face-punchingly annoying title song that hung around the charts like a nuclear isotope for an entire year. The rumours about Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves at the time was amazing. The fact that we had, uh, you know, there was a black guy in it for the first time. Uh, we had an American Robin Hood. Nobody watches that film for Costner. It's all about Rickman. They hated each other because it became quite obvious quite quickly that Alan Rickman was clearly the star of this movie. In the 90s, it was really popular to have an American film star do a crap British accent in British films, playing heroes kind of thing, like Robin Hood, Kevin Costner, for instance. And then there was a freaky-ass witch as well with the... Um, do you she had, like, white contact lenses? Yeah, and, and she spat into a bowl and yeah, yeah, bled yeah, into... Yeah. Oh. I didn't enjoy that. Morgan Freeman was the best thing about that film because that was a film that really 
brought him to attention to my attention and lucky yeah. for him that it did yeah a lot of people say that having uh, Kevin Costner around is the key to having a massive number one, whereas I've always found he's the key to having a massive number two. See, I think the early 90s was Costner. It was like, if, if you were a big fan of Kevin Costner, this was the perfect time for you. If you were a normal person, this was pretty much like hell on earth. Yeah. Well, actually, if you, if you look back at other successful number ones, he was actually in the videos as well. Kevin Ebenezer Good, actually, he was Kevin Costner in the wig and the, and the hat. But fortunately, later on during the 90s, we were given Waterworld, which ended his career. <laughs> <laughs> so, what a blessing. <laughs> Does that doesn't work anymore. Costner's lost his mojo. He certainly has. Yeah. Last time I heard, he was trying to, um, he was busking down to Trafalgar Square. I can't remember what he was doing. But one of those, like, um, you know, I gave him a couple quid anyway, so. Look into my eyes, you will see what you mean to me. Mawkish, foppish, Nazi, sentimental crap. <laughs> One was the greatest year for music ever. The Clash topping the charts with Should I Stay or Should I Go, Maddox Street Preachers making merry with Motown Junk, and the KLF generally taking the piss with everything. Best of all, were a bunch of smelly haired wacky day glow funsters from Seattle showing that the drugs do work, at least in the short term, as long as you keep the gun to have a well, I think obviously when Nirvana were coming up with the lyrics, uh, they might have been sat around in a dirty mm. room off their piles. Uh, we we do a bit of DJing and when we play it, I used to just sort of mime because I didn't have a clue what you were saying. A mulatto. An albino. A albino. A mulatto. A mosquito. A mosquito. And his libido. Are those really the lyrics? What does that mean? A load of words put together, nobody knows what they are. But in their world, they will know exactly what it means to the T. Is it the start of a really bad joke? Uh, yeah, Kurt Cobain was the first to dabble in the murky waters of uh, the surreal three men walk into a pub joke. Like an Englishman, Irishman and a Scotsman walk into a bar. Is it a mulatto and albino? Why are you thinking? Walk into a bar. Now, Cobain, as we all know, is a reductionist. He's always looking for the one note, the one truth. But to be fair, it sounds quite good. Mm. So and it doesn't have to make sense, does it? And now we'll never know. That's deep. It was all a bit smelly and a bit, like, tops with sleeves kind of dangling down and, like, just all a bit serious. The whole grunge was a way of life, wasn't it? It was like you had to wear the clothes, you had to grow your hair, and you had to have an army jacket mm. with a little flag on and you had to not wash. But then there were those, those kind of really grungy kids already at school, the ones that we used to mock for not washing, were then suddenly darn cool. And that really annoyed you because they were getting all the chicks and all the people that had spent the last two years trying to get really cool haircuts, wiped out. I hated grunge for that very reason. I'm talking. 